Okay, so let's have a look at this integral over here. How would you approach this integral? Well, you might be familiar with a, a formula, and the formula is basically the integral of 1 over x minus a, x minus b equals 1 over x minus b, natural log of x minus a, x minus b, the modulus of that, plus your arbitrary constant of integration. But where does that formula come from? So I'm going to show you how to integrate this without having to apply the formula. And in so doing, you'll get a sense of where that formula comes from. Okay, so let's have a look. All right, so this is very difficult to integrate. So what we're going to do is we're going to recognize that you can use partial fractions. You can break this up into partial fractions to make it more integratable. And when you have, when you have algebraic fractions, you, will, you might have one fraction that is like something over x minus 1 and something over x plus 1. And then in order to add or subtract those fractions, you need to have a common denominator, and that would then be x minus 1, x plus 1. So you'll multiply each term by whatever you need to to, to allow, the, allow the common denominator to be there for additional subtraction to occur. So just as a quick example of what I'm talking about, maybe you have like a three, I need to get this pen to the right cutter. Maybe you have something like three over um, x uh, plus two, and you want to add that to five over, <clears throat> let's say um, x plus nine or something like that. And you want to add these two, and then of course you have to have a common denominator, and in that case, you just multiply these two denominators together, which would give you x plus 9, x plus 2. And then this already has the x plus 2, so you just have to multiply this by x plus 9. So then it's going to be 3x plus 9. And this already has the x plus 9, so you have to multiply it by x plus 2, so plus 5 x plus 2. Okay, so basically what we want to do is we want to go backwards from this side, from the right-hand side, we want to go back to the left-hand side. So we're going to break these two up. We want to break these two up and then we'll have some constants on top. So that's partial fractions and that's what we're going to do. Okay, so let me just get rid of this over here quickly. Let me just delete all of that. Okay, so let's see how we do that. Okay, so we recognize just as per what I just showed you that, okay, the integral of 1 over x minus 1 x plus 1 dx is the same as the integral of, and we're going to break this up now. Okay, we're going to break this up to some constant, it's going to be like some a, some constant is called a, over x minus 1. So we're just undoing the common denominator situation and breaking it up into partial fractions, plus some other constant, let's call it b, over x plus 1, dx. And then you can see this is going to be much more integratable than that. Okay, so how do we do this? There are a few methods for doing this. Um, the quickest is the cover-up method, which is the way I would do it, but I'm not going to speak about that. It's very quick and it's quite easy to do, but we need to see where it comes from. So one way to do this is we, we, we can choose values for x, okay, that will make one of the terms disappear such that we can solve for b and solve for a separately. Okay, so let's just do that, do that on the side. We, we ignore the integral for the moment, and let's just have a look at what we're integrating here. We've got x minus 1, x plus 1 equals a over x minus 1 plus b over x plus 1. Okay, so I'm just rewriting this down here so we can zoom in on this a little bit more because what we really want we want to solve for this a and b so i can plug some constants into here and then i can integrate this plus integrate that 
Okay, so let's do that. So one way to do this is we first need to um, get rid of this on, on the left hand side, let's get rid of this denominator. So we can times both sides of this equation by x minus one, x plus one. And if we do that, this will be a times x minus one, x plus one. And then the x minus ones will cancel. Okay, so we'll have one equals, I'm going to, what I'm doing is timesing both sides. So I'm timesing by x minus one, x plus one. And I'm doing the same thing to each term over here. I'm not going to write it because it's going to get quite messy. But you can imagine x plus one, x minus one, the x minus ones will cancel. So you'll just be left with x plus one over here. And then over here, the x plus ones will cancel. So you'll just be left with x minus one on this side. And then over here, of course, everything cancels. These cancel with these and you're left with one. So when you multiply both sides by x minus one, x plus one, you're left with one equals a. And we can expand the brackets over here. Okay, um, but one thing we could do, we could expand the brackets, and if you have a way to um, compare left and right sides, compare the constants and compare the coefficients of x, you could do it that way. But one way to do it is, um, what you could do is, and you, in order to compare the coefficients of x, you would have to expand out these brackets and collect like terms, factor out the x. But what we're going to do instead is, as I said, we're just going to get rid of one of these terms and solve for the other term. Okay, so how can I get rid of this b? How can I get rid of this b term? Well, I can get rid of this b term by making this, making the parentheses, whatever's in the parentheses equal to zero. Okay, so if I let x equal, if I let x equal one, this will be one minus one is zero, and this will disappear. So let's let x equal one. Okay, and if we do that, we'll get one, this will disappear, one minus one is zero, b minus zero is zero. So we'll get one equals a, and one plus one is two. So that's just two a. Therefore, a equals one over two. Okay, and if we do the same thing, but now we want to make a disappear. Okay, so now we make x equal to minus one, because minus one plus one is zero, so a will disappear. We'll be left with one equals Okay, so it's minus one. Minus one minus one is minus two. So it's minus two B. So then B equals negative one half. Okay, so now we have an A and a B. And now we can stick this A and B into this. So we stick half up here into the A and we stick uh, minus half to the B, which is just gonna make it go, go downstairs. So this will become so this will become, this integral will now equal, so I'm just sticking the half and minus half, so it's gonna be one over two x minus one, okay, plus, plus, I'm gonna write plus and I'm gonna write a minus again, this should be a minus because it's a minus half, but that's okay, I'm just gonna write it this way, plus minus one, <laughs> over 2x plus 1. Okay, and this is all in parentheses dx. Okay, great. So we could actually factor out, there's a, there's a half and a half over here, so we could bring the, the half outside of the integral. Okay, and then we could integrate these separately. So I'm going to bring the half out. I'm going to say half. I'm going to put big brackets over here. Okay, just taking the half out. There's a half here, there's a half here. Okay, I'll keep the minus. And I'm gonna say the integral of one over x minus one. Okay, minus the integral of one over x plus one. Now this is much more workable. And dx. Okay, so now we can see that this is just a matter of using the natural light. We know we know this this integral. It's just going to be just going to be ln x minus one, and then we're going to think about the d the dx. So if this if x minus one is u, what's the derivative of u? Well, the derivative of this in this case is just one. Okay, so that's going to make this easy. So we've got 
the derivative is one, so I don't have to do anything to get rid of that derivative. It's just going to be ln x minus one. Okay, and then we have over here, what do we have over here? Okay, so the derivative of this, it's also going to be one, very nice. Okay, very, very nice indeed. And this is just going to be ln x plus one. dx. Well, we've um, taken no more dx. We've done the plus c. We've done the integral. And that's it. Now we have uh, log laws. We can use the properties of natural logarithms or logarithms in general, exponents and, and logs. And we can rewrite this as ln and we can go x minus 1 on top, x plus 1 at the bottom, plus c. So here we found a solution to um, to this, and we've done it just by breaking this up using partial fractions. And, and there you go. So this is not quite as hard. The key is just to be able to break it up into little pieces that are that you are able to integrate. Okay, and then in the next video, I'm going to look at um, a formula. By, by looking at this pattern, we, we can arrive at a, a formula on your standard table of integrals and how we can use that formula for, for um, more complicated uh, integrals. There you go.